Right, I now need to unplug the camera to plug the mouse back in. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig, um, just you and me this week, what are you drinking? I am drinking a Naughty Neighbor American Pale Ale. That sounds lovely. And I've just polished off a cider um, and I haven't got any more in the fridge, which is really sad. What's also really sad um, is that we don't have a Becca or a James. So we'll, James, I presume, is drinking because he's had a power cut. And uh, in the UK, we would celebrate power cuts by drinking everything that's in the fridge and eating all the ice cream in the freezer because you never know when the power might come back on. Um, and by lighting of candles. Um, that's my only memories of power cuts as a child. Um, uh, how, how would that work for you in Canada? What, what's the, uh, the power cut routine there? Presumably hunker down for the winter because you're under 20 meters of snow or something. So it's storm chips, actually. So storm chips is the big thing. There's the, the bit everybody runs out to the store and buys beer and potato chips. That does sound good. I mean, in the UK, we don't need much to be persuaded to panic by, so I'm pretty sure we can get on board with that. And also, we're we're missing the rolling eyes of Becca Kingdom as well. Sadly, she she has um, got a really bad eye strain from rolling her eyes too much and is quite tired. Um, so it's just um, had to drop out this week because she's probably been overdoing it, doing that silly BMX stuff or something, Craig, hasn't she? So. I don't know. I, I do know it is easy to overlook uh, just how much uh, training impulse there is in uh, a few laps of the BMX track. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that at the end because I've, I've seen a few people posting about kind of how they're doing less training but more racing and how they're, sort of that, they're catching up with the tiredness. I think we'll chat about that at the end. But Craig, what's coming up this week in the Herd Racing League? So I will do my, uh, my bad uh, James fill in here. So this week, uh, starting with the uh, herd of mountain goats, we have Road to Sky this week. So th this is back to the, the roots of the herd, herd of mountain goats, uh, where it used to be Road to Sky every weekend. Um, so then on, uh, well, Sunday and Monday, uh, the Stampede individual time trial is triple loops. And uh, actually, when I saw this, this was, I didn't even know this course existed. So this is... Uh, an interesting course with a, an ascent of uh, box and leaf hills. So uh, very interesting. Um, then the herd Shiris uh, comes into its uh, third week with uh, one lap of cast pats, 23.8 kilometers, 155 meters. Uh, bullseye on Wednesday is 12 laps of the Queen's Highway. And uh, then we get into uh, next weekend for the Herd Summer Racing League, we have the wonderful finale that is Hilly Root in 10 laps of Hilly Root for A category and one less uh, lap as you go down categories, nine for B, eight for C, and seven for D, which is still a long, long race. And it, this, uh, is, this is crazy, isn't it? This is absolutely bonkers. And I, I haven't spoken to you or, or James or Becca about this yet, but I'm wondering whether we need to do the podcast a little bit earlier next week, just so we can spend the time um, basically filling your time in this stupidly long race with nonsense, um, because that's a, that's a mad race, isn't it? It's very long. But uh, more about that next week. Uh, triple loops. The, uh, we, we were chatting just before we started recording a new uh, a new loop, a new accidental pun, a new route for both of us. Um, and this is an absolute brute um, of a course. So it, looking at the, the details on the Zwift tax, about half of it's flat. And then you hit the two climbs of, of Box and Leith. That is, a, and it's a, about 41 kilometers long, isn't it? Um, 564 meters of climbing. That is a brute of a time trial. Um, is it tempted by it, Craig? I actually kind of am. Um, I probably won't end up doing it, but yeah, that that is definitely tempting. I know it's, it's one that if I could find the time to do, I, I would definitely do and cry about afterwards. It's, it's an absolute brute. 
Um, and it actually got a mention, it got a shout out um, on the Zwift Insider pages as, as well. Uh, and James didn't mention what this was for. And I clicked on the article and it was basically stupid hard events to do this week. <laughs> so well done, James, on uh, creating a, an event so stupid and so hard, it's, it's got uh, recognition from outside. So uh, Steve, I guess uh, now we're back to the, the most important part of the podcast this weekend's Herd Summer Racing League. Yeah, and I, I'm going to try and do my most excited James Bailey voice. And I can't, I, I just can't keep that going. I don't know how he does it. it he's such a pro. Um, so uh, this is Petit Bouc. Um, uh, depending on how bad my French is there, apologies to you people who actually speak French properly. Uh, so this is uh, the route that covers all the roads in France in both directions, except the road rides at Mont Ventoux. Um, unless you're, of course, Ben Poynton, who probably is going to decide to make this 100k and ride up and down Ventoux just as a cool down. So we're looking at a 61 kilometre route with 434 metres of climbing. Um, Caesars tackle all the major sections are both in the forward and reverse di direction. And, you know, Zwift, because it's Zwift, uh, only one of the um, climbs up the Pity Com is actually a section. So um, we'll start off hitting the Parve sp Sprint reverse, pretty standard 33 or 330 metre sprint. Steve. Uh, Oh. Steve, I have to correct you. You're looking at the wrong thing. So before the start, in the lead-in, there's a prime. Oh, wow. Which is the, mar the marina sprint reverse. I, I have seen the marina. I, I'm looking at the right thing now. I've seen the marina sprint reverse. Wow, that is... Um, I have no idea how long that is because I can't read that off the webpage. And this is why we have James to do... Uh, to do things in the proper way. But we see, anyway, Marina Sprint Reverse, as I read the right things now, Parve Sprint Reverse, Aqueduct Com Reverse. Again, it's not really a com, is it? It's it's a kind of long sprint with a bit, bit of a climb in it. Ballon Sprint Reverse. Um, then we uh, hit head back towards the Aqueduct, uh, well, via the Pity Com uh, reverse that isn't a segment. We go back to Ballon Sprint reverse uh, over the aqueduct again, hit the Parve again, hit the Marina again, back to the Ballon Sprint, and then finally Pity Com before hitting the Marina Sprint reverse again, which is our finish line. And James would probably say there's no primes on that one um, because it's the finish line, but I might be wrong on that, Craig. I'm not sure. This no, is why we have correct. James. You are correct. That is not a prime. So now, there's, there's one more thing uh, that uh, you missed in that the ballon sprint does not count. Um, so the ballon sprint does not count because there is a limit of eight different primes that James can pick when he uh, does the race results. So this is uh, we we just ran out. Oh, well, that's good news, isn't it? So presumably he's kept Petty Com in as a segment, which is good for those of us who like climbing up hills. And he's taken out the sprint that's just before that. Um, so, yeah, that's good news. Um, and, and also good news will be hopefully that James is back last week because I have completely butchered that. So, uh, well, what do we want to talk about first? I, I actually really like this route. Um, uh, I think there's a bit of stuff for everyone in it. Uh, I'm really glad I'm back in the seas because uh, I stand a chance of not just riding around it on my own, which is what I did the first time I did this route, uh, which I think was the first race I got promoted to bees. Uh, I got dropped in the first 500 metres and then, and then just read it on my, rode it on my own um, for 60-odd kilometres, which, which I, I think I met a couple of Cs on the way, which was lovely. Um, so yeah, I really like this course, really good fun, loads of cool sprints on it, definitely one you want to be in a group in because there's a lot of sprint primes on this. Um, and Aqueduct isn't really a com. Uh, uh, so yeah, th that's kind of my tactic. Find a bunch, stay in a bunch, hammer the primes. Uh, Craig, ha I imagine you quite like this course. I think this is one that's particularly suited to your talents as well. This one, I adore this course. Um, so the first time the so the first time we did this uh, with Herd Summer Racing League in Series Two was when it was brand new and none of the sprints were able to be counted. So it was just the aqueduct, the aqueduct in both directions, or I think maybe only one direction counted. I can't remember now. I think that you got times for both and then Zwift mucked it. It was the usual weirdness, wasn't it? That I think one of the aqueducts ended up not counting and it was only the people who did race one that found that out and it kind of filtered through the Facebook page, but yeah. Yeah, so I did race one, I, I did both. 
but it, it worked out okay. I came, I ended up second by a point in that run. So I was still in the seas. That was one of my last sea races. Um, I had an, I had an absolutely terrific matchup with uh, Andy Kroll from ATP during that one. We, we, we had a great race. Um, but I, I think you did nail it, uh, Steve. The biggest and most important thing in this race is get and stay in a group. Um, whether you have to go harder than you'd really prefer to stay in a group or you slow down to get to meet up with the group behind you, um, staying on your own for these big, long, flat sections in between the the critical spots or the the sprints and the and petit com, it just not worth it. Um, and it, it's it really sucks. So yeah, the you go so I, much faster for being in a group, don't you? Sorry, you were saying the second time you did it, Craig. Well, so the second time we did this or I did this was in Zwift Racing League. So we did, we finished, I think, at the Marina Sprint Forward. Um, so we didn't do the the entire course, but I had a power drop out in the pen and I just, I, I was, I was 20 meters from catching on, but just couldn't quite get there. And so it was an individual time trial for me and it was miserable. Don't do that. So uh, let's talk bike selection. I, I think there's actually, a, a, I, I would be going my fastest flat bike for this because I think the first com isn't a timed segment. The last com is a timed segment, but it's quite near the end of the race. France is really, really flat, basically. Apart from that, I mean, there's the bit in the rollers and there's petit com, but the rest of it is pretty much flat. And there's a lot of primes available for the sprints. So I'm thinking fastest flat bike. I mean, obviously I'm riding Pink Tron because A, because the Pink Tron is the best bike in the game, as we all know, but B, the Pink Tron, the Tron is also one of the faster flat bikes. Um, what would you be choosing here, Craig? Uh, honestly, I think I'm Tron as well. Um, it, so the fastest flat bike is absolutely valid. And honestly, it's it might be the best the best solution. But the, so the Petit Com reverse is not a class of it. So it's not a scored se segment, but it is going to be very decisive in, uh, it, it's going to winnow down the group. Um, and I think on the Aqueduct KOMs, um, so the Aqueduct sprints, they are uphill enough that your the bike weight probably does matter. Um, I really think that Tron might be the right op option here. It, it's so close in aero performance to the fast, the, the fastest, the very fastest bikes that, and it's enough better over the, uh, the KOM and Pity KOM, the time segment, there's, there's a first section that isn't as steep and then a steep then a steeper section and you're going to draft in that uh that first section and then it's that last steeper bit where draft isn't going to matter and neither really is arrow as much and that's really what's going to be decisive both for the petit com uh points but also for your finishing order so i to me i think it is the tron yeah it's uh Petit comes a tricky one as well. I think this is weirdly the descent in a way is the bit I found hardest. So I remember beating in some of the races, beating riders up Petit Com and then waiting, not really waiting, but slowing down a bit. So they caught me on the descent. And then because there was, I think it was Nate home actually at the time, but there's a significant weight difference and speed difference as they came past. They just flew through me because there's a few of them in a bunch. We know the blob goes quick and so if they were going fast on the scent and they just blew through me, I could never catch them again. So I think the descent can be tricky. Um, you can't super tuck it as early as you think you could. Um, and certainly going down, having done the comm segment at the end, it, it takes you a while to get into the super tuck there, doesn't it? Once you've gone through the comm banner um, before you hit the marina sprint. So it is, it is a tricky descent, this one. It is. And I know... Um... I, so I remember when I did this in the race the first time, the, the two of us that were, so there was 
I think three of us that were pretty much together as we went over the top of the KOM and two of us had done very well in the, the aqueduct KOMs that we thought both counted, uh, but only one did. <laughs> um, and the two of us let one guy go because he hadn't sprinted that. And uh, so that was, I mean, it worked. We were first and second, but uh, it, yeah, he, he actually finished, I think he was 30 seconds ahead of us. Uh, and that was just from the descent. Uh, it was uh, quite a difference. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's like I said, it's a cool route. Um, we're ramping up the distances. So it's 60 Ks before the 90 odd Ks of ridiculousness. Um, how long do you think it's taking people? If memory serves, it, it took me just under two hours, I think, last time when I did it mostly on my own. Um, yeah. I, so I was. Oh, uh, what so Swift Power gives me an hour 40 that I was last time. So that would be actually an hour and a half of race time because I would see, so no, an hour 35 of race time. So I, I was only five minutes, five minutes after the Ds. So, and today, I think in race one, the lead A's would have been about an hour 20. No, they're far faster than I'm going to be, but I think for a really good, a really good C or, uh, you know, middle of the pack B, depending on how you end up with drafting, I think a little bit above or below an hour and a half. And yeah, that, that seems about right, about the 90 minute mark for, um, for the kind of upper mid B's and some really good C's. Probably closer to two hours for the D's in this one. I think they'll be looking sub two I, hours. I, maybe. Think, I, uh, I think most most good D's should be under two hours, but uh, yeah, it it that's uh, getting close to there. And some of that is, and the D's tend to not end up in groups as much and tend to do a lot more of writing by themselves, yeah. unfortunately. So I, I sort of one question we see get asked a little bit. What what are you thinking with these longer rides in terms of kind of hydration? Do you do you try and eat those kind of things? I, I must admit, my, my rule of thumb is that if the ride's under an hour, I have a, a bead on with usually just water in it. Um and I fuel before and I hydrate a bit more afterwards. But during the ride, I don't I don't really find I need a feed. I don't really find, need any more hydration than I get from water. What what are you thinking for these longer rides? Um, so I tend to race these uh, after rolling out of bed. So I will I will eat during them just because I haven't eaten since supper the night before. Uh, but I, I'm I'm normally Gatorade and uh, you know just something some complex cover carbohydrate but easy to digest type stuff. Uh, you know, just soda crackers or something that's. Uh, not going to hit the stomach when you do when you go all in on those sprints but uh we'll give you a few calories yeah i'd be thinking for this one i'm probably thinking two bead on so a, a good liter of hydration Ooh, probably doing a mix usually with me so I, I i tend not to use too much gatorade and things like that or or um hydration things just so fun they don't quite agree with me while i'm while i'm in a ride um so I would tend to go one water um, there and then one kind of hydration salt. So the SIS tablets, anything like that, um, that kind of uh, does your thing. And I think my bidons are 600 mil. So just over a litre of water for, for the 90 minutes. I'd probably get grab a flapjack or something like that. Again, a complex carbohydrates seem like a much partial way of referring to it. I'm, I'm getting something that's a bit OT and a bit sugary. Um, so yeah, I'm getting a piece of flapjack again, something I can... I can eat fairly, I, I don't like gels, which is why I don't bother with things like that. I, I find they just make me feel ill. Uh, and, and I usually, I mean, those of you who've seen the picture of me trying to fit tubeless tires, me and sticky fluids don't go well together. Um, and yeah, so I, I tend to go with something that I have to, to eat normally that's actual food rather than a gel. Um, and I tend to go with something that's gooey enough that I don't have to chew too much, if that makes sense. So uh, I, there's nothing worse, is there? When you, you, you get something out, you kind of, well, I really need something to eat. 
you put it in your mouth and your mouth's really dry and you kind of end up with an even drier mouth kind of uh, going round and round. So uh, yeah, I tend to go for a bit of flapjack. I find the, um, uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of the brand now, The uh, they do the peanut butter bars and things like that are really good. Um, and I'll remember the name of the brand and tell somebody on Discord if they really care. Um, but yeah, so probably only eating one one thing like that I'd probably look to do it after the first or on that first descent because I think I can if I get in a group and I'm super tucked usually you can kind of switch off a bit and open something up you don't have to steer or brake so we do, for all this talking about tricky descents they're, they're about as tricky as a descent where you don't have to steer think uh, or or brake uh, can ever get really um, so yeah that, that's what I'd be thinking on that one um, so yeah that's about it really I think standard tactics hammer the primes stick in a group if we can ride the tron the tron's actually one of the faster bikes if you haven't got the tron we're looking at your fastest flat bike um i don't think there's really anything to be gained with a climbing bike on this um so yeah that, that's it really i'm anything else we want to mention before we go into our standard whinges about zwift but uh any shout outs you've got this week right um, so we did a broadcast uh, in the uh, in my early morning with uh, Nate Holm and James and uh, Ben Poynton uh, commentating of the Herd Shiris, and uh, it was a really great race. And uh, just a shout out to the ladies for having such a great race, and it was a pleasure to cover it. And thank you for, uh, you, this is a, I don't know if this is a bit of niche British subculture, but a uh, shout out to all the ladies uh, here would be a very, uh, it would be a nightclub that many of us have been in uh, and many of us would not want to ever go to again. So uh, yeah, great vibes there, Craig. Um, before we get onto our standard rants about, so if we did talk earlier, I did mention earlier about uh, training and racing and things like that. And, and I think it's um, it's an interesting one that, I, I saw Ryan um, post today in the group, um, Ryan Akiyama, apologies if I brutalized the name there, Ryan, but I, that he was kind of really fatigued at the moment and he looked at his training workload and he'd well, I've been training a lot less, but then realized he'd been racing a lot more. So kind of, I think that's the, that's the danger with Zwift, isn't it? It's actually quite a fun game. So you play the game more. Yes, it makes you fitter. Like, ultimately, it's a game we enjoy playing and the herd's a wonderful place to make it. But we just got to be careful about playing the game too much or too hard and not doing recovery. And we we spoke about this with Mark, Lord, Lord Orange, didn't we, um, in a previous pod. But I guess my question for you is, what what's your kind of, how do you balance your racing and your training and, and life and BMXing? So, I, and this is where in the summer it's tough uh, because... I, I go to the BMXing and then that's just, it's nothing but intensity. So I guess some of what I do for, for that is a lot of my BMX practice. I do a few sprints, but probably less than I should uh, and more skills work. Now, honestly, I do really, I, I have a lot of power relative to my skill level. So that's probably what I should be working on. So it, it works out pretty well. Um, but I mean, really, my personal training philosophy is the classic 70-30 rule, where 70% of your training, including your weekly long ride or long run, should be at easy pace, where you can you can have a conversation. Um, so that that gets tough when you're doing a lot of Zwift racing. Um, I mean, some of it depends on how lucky or where you fall in your team time trial team so some weeks you know you your uh, the time that you're not on the front is is easy pace for you and some weeks it's it's pretty close to ftp or above um, but it it can be tough to get that in um, you can cheat a little bit when you're doing mostly cycling and less running so the 70 30 definitely comes from running um, where Intense running is more intense than intense cycling because you're lifting your body weight every step. But uh, no, that's that's my rule of thumb. Um, you can you can get by by break get by breaking it for a little while, but after if you do it for too long, it catches up to you. Yeah, and I think the key thing, and I, I think the challenge a lot of people face with Swift, and 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 it's maybe a challenge the herd, herd racing league presents itself that we're back to back to back to back. 
is periodization as well. And I mean, we've spoken before, my background's coaching team sports, and we would definitely think about periodization. We break this, even in a, in a season, we'd break the season up into chunks. So that we'd be thinking about different things. The training would feel different to the players, although ostensibly it's 90 minutes, it's two hours on a pitch running around. Kind of, we we would vary the intensity with that. Um, and another thing I think is kind of, we would start thinking about kind of spacing our intense training away from our match training. So if say we had training on a Tuesday and a Thursday and a match on a Saturday, the heavy load training would be on a Tuesday. Thursday is an easy training. We might make the Thursday more of a thinky training. So this was a question I was going to ask about kind of, uh, we all have jobs and we have lives. Actually, sometimes it's a bit stressful. And I've definitely fallen foul of this. I've really wanted to do an event. I've logged in five minutes before. I've not done a warm up, and I just end up more peed off afterwards that I've done a bad race. And actually, I'd probably say to myself then, just like, no, you've had a stressful time. Your brain isn't in the right place to be. So you need something where you don't have to think as much. And that could just be not even being on Swift. It could be jump on the bike and go and ride on the dirt tracks outside. Or if you can't do that, it's get on and do a social ride. Just get on and ride around a thing. Don't do, don't do a race event because you're probably going to get yourself mentally into a worse place there. So do you... Let's, let's talk a bit about periodization, but then let's also, what do you think about kind of where you are mentally and how you, how you would change your, uh, your, your riding or running accordingly? So, I mean, for me, yeah, the, where I am mentally, how I deal, how I always dealt with that. Uh, so I used to be more serious in running than I am in cycling now by far. Um, it, I mean, this, this is a lark to stay in shape and a lot of fun. Um, I, I used to be semi-serious in running. Um, and definitely for me, I, I always left flexibility in my training. If I didn't, so I had a, a loose structure where I had to get a long run in a week. I had to get a tempo run in a week and an interval session in, in a week depending on the time of year, but for the, for the most part. And then most of the rest were easy runs. Sometimes I do a mid long run or a second interval session, depending on the time of year. But if any day, whether it was, I just wasn't feeling it before I started, or I go out on my warm up and I'm like, I don't feel like running intervals or a tempo run today, or I don't, I can't, I can't do my long run today. I just not do it that day and do it two days later or whenever, or sometimes even skip that week for that thing. And I think you have to leave yourself that flexibility to listen to your body. But at the same time, you have to be honest with yourself and not skip it too often. So it's, it's a really hard balance to strike, but you definitely have to leave yourself a little bit of flexibility to, to, to move that workout, I, whether because of life whether you've got you're doing something else and you've got a, a a big curling bond spiel or or soccer game or whatever it is, leave yourself a little bit of flexibility and and then fit in what you can. There is definitely a niche heard podcast in random things from around the world that people do. A curling bond spiel. Is that what you said? Bond spiel, yes. I I Again, that's for our niche uh, podcast, um, um, and we'll talk to you about welly wanging while we're at it. So, uh, um, yeah, I definitely feel that, and I, I, there, there is a fine balance, and it's that it's that kind of classic. When I talk to my film say she sometimes doesn't want to go to hockey training. It's like that classic word: get, go to train, and you can always decide to not train. I think it's the same with an event sometimes, and I think there are times where yeah, listen to your body and go like I need to do an easier thing. But there are also times when you know maybe do the event. You might might go better than it was, and ultimately it's a game. You can always get off your bike and go. No, it's not. It's not happening for me tonight. Uh, and what I think everyone knows about the herd is there's never any judgment about that. Nobody's going to be like, oh bloody old Craig got off his bike halfway through and be like, well that's fine. We've all been there. So. That's cool. Um, a, a random other segment I'm going to throw in because we were chatting about this in, in, in the week. Heard of hay fever sufferers. Um, you've probably heard me snuffling away today, so I'll, uh, I'll apologize for that. But like, how do you find hay fever? So I, I last year I wasn't so bad, although I did mostly do, uh, before I painted the garage floors with um, breathing in concrete dust. So I think that was probably counteracting whatever lack of breathing I have through hay fever. But 
I mean, as you can probably hear now, I'm slightly out of breath talking because I'm just a bit congested with hay fever. And I, I struggle um, a bit when I'm like this. Uh, do you find anything helps? What do you do? do, do you have, I know you suffer from hay fever as well. I also have, like antihistamines make me incredibly drowsy. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not a fun time of year for us hay fever sufferers, is it? it it's really not. Um, I have to be completely honest. I've never found anything that helps other than staying out of the grass um so you know given the the years i spent uh in the military crawling through the grass that really sucked in, in this time of year um so no it's a uh there's not much you can do uh, i i do find sometimes if i can get away with you know, kind of the, the once a day antihistamine every other day. Uh, and it totally depends on how much exposure, how much I'm outside, how much I'm traping through the grass, how much I'm lying in the grass, all, all of that. Uh, if I can get away with it, I find that helps with the athletics, but you have to take it if you're, if you're exposed. It, it It's a really hard thing and I, I don't think there's a good answer. So I think, the th I, interestingly, the thing that genuinely helped, and now I've moved farther away from work, and obviously we've had, uh, I don't think I've actually been in my office that regularly for since March last year, we, we stopped within the UK. But when I would cycle into the office, so I'd spend about an hour cycling to the office, have a shower when I got in, I'd spend about an hour cycling home, have a shower when I got home. And there's something about getting that bit of exposure, but then immediately you have a shower, you wash all the pollen out of your hair, you wash it off your body, um, and then maybe take an antihistamine. And I think there was something about that kind of actually dosing myself, but then washing it, washing away the pollen, dosing myself. So I think there is something about kind of not just hiding away to sort of exposing yourself in small doses that, that seem to help me anyway. So yeah, but just general recognition, it's a bit rubbish. And speaking of rubbish things, what an amazing segue that was. Um, what has annoyed you about the world of Swift this week, Craig? Um, honestly, again, not much. I, uh, and this is, I'm really only on Swift two or three times a week, maximum at this point. Um, I had a terrific time uh, in the TTT yesterday with the uh, the herd of quokkas. Uh, we had a great race. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish it with the group because my crank arm fell apart. But uh, we, 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 other than that, had a great time. I can't blame that on Zwift. That's only on my mechanic, which is me. Yeah. When you say your crank arm fell apart, I mean, most crank arms are, are one piece. Um, so I, I have so many questions here. Sorry, the crank fell apart, meaning the left crank arm was loose from the axle, which is... <laughs> that, that's quite a catastrophic... Right did it fail catastrophically? Did I, I've got this image of you, like, legs akimbo, one leg flying around, one crank flapping through the air. Is it, is it disconnects from your SPD arcing across the garage towards Kerry's head or something like that? It's... So, unfortunately, it wasn't that spectacular. Um, <laughs> basically, it started getting loose. It started getting really loose while I was uh, climbing the... Uh, Titans Grove KOM the second time. And then uh, after we went over the top, I unclipped and reclipped to see if that was it. And then realized that, no, no, that's not it. And it's moving. <laughs> so I got off, uh, realized that it was loose. Unfortunately, didn't have my multi-tool next to the bike. Had to run to the basement, grab my tools, bring them upstairs. And by then I was uh, 30 seconds plus behind the uh, the rest of the herd of quokkas. And uh, Never, never managed to keep up. I was, I finished a minute behind them, or a minute 20, I think. This sounds like a, a great new Zwift event, which is you have kind of something has to break that you then have to get grab your multi tool and fix and kind of like the Zwift duathlon. But, um, yeah, so I, I tell oh. you what, I tell you what has annoyed me about Zwift this week. Um, and you, you heard it in our voices. So we were genuinely really excited by Triple Loops because even though it's not new tarmac, that to us, both of us were like, oh, that's a new route. I've not done that before. And I really feel for James and all the race organizers that you can't 
basically put a custom pin, even if it was between two arches. So it had to be a defined start point, call them pens, and it had to be a defined end point, call it an arch, that it, they could go, I want to go from here to here to here to here, and that's going to make my race course. Um, I mean, you can kind of do custom distances, but wouldn't it be cool if we could do some custom routes? So another another moan at Swift about not having basic functionality that would be nice. So that would be really nice. I will say in support of Swift, they have given us a few routes and uh, James has put one into uh, his proposed next uh, next summer racing league season. And I think Chain, Chom Chain Chomper is going to be a really interesting race course. So oh, we are going to talk bike changes on Chain Chomper. We're going to talk bike changes. I'm excited for that one. Um, I'm also really excited for James' proposed TT Road to Sky, um, which is just bonkers crazy. And I love it. And I'm definitely going to be there for that one. So uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. And I'm hopefully going to be there um, for race uh, three tomorrow to do this one um but we'll see how how my day pans out um i think that's I it really. have to throw a, i have to throw a little bit of a wet blanket on that one steve honestly it's road to sky it's not much different than it's a tt mentally entirely different though isn't it like it, it is normally just a tt once you clear the jungle but uh now it's just it's a tt before then i mean everyone would obviously treat it entirely differently and we will talk about it entirely differently, even though it's exactly the same approach. But um, I think that's it for me, Craig. I'm going to say good night to you. Good night.